Hello, namaste. namaste. Thank you guys for coming today. We have one more on the list. So if you hear the door open, is Jamie coming in? Maybe. We'll see. Um, today, what I wanted to speak about is something I actually cover around this time every year. And it's something that the yogis say is the greatest gift. And even Thich Nhat Hanh has a quote uh, that says the same thing. The greatest gift that we can give ourselves for another is the gift of presence. So I know this time of year we think presence is in a physical gift that you give someone. Um, but the true gift is just being present with them and to be totally engaged through whatever interaction or exchange that you're having. This was a few years ago, but I remember um, we had gone out to eat at Uncle Julio's mm -hmm. in Brentwood. And we went out to eat, and at that time I was running a studio and I had to answer a question that came through text and it was related back to the business. So I was covering that. And literally by the time I looked back up at the table, both the children and Rob had gotten out their phones just within those few seconds of me bringing out my phone. And I was mortified. I looked around. I'm like, no, we are not going to be that table. We're not going to be that family that's all sunken in on their phones. I'm like, phones got to be put away. And so now that's a rule. You know, ever since that moment, I'm like, no phones at the dinner table, period. Um, but you can see how when you're interacting with someone, when that becomes a distraction, can be frustrating, especially when you're in the middle of a of a deep conversation, or you're being vulnerable and opening up to someone, or even in the heat of a moment, you know, and things really need to get expressed at that point. And then there's that distraction that comes in. So it doesn't have to necessarily be with the phone. It could be other things. Um, just the stress that we are under right now, we can get easily distracted by the world and what's going on. So I want your yoga and your meditation to remind you of how important being present is. In the very uh, first verse of the yoga philosophy, it's called the Yoga Sutras, the very first word is atta. And atta means now. So even yogic philosophy begins with now. Now we begin the teachings of yoga. Now we'll bring it into practice. Now we are going to connect. And so the whole point of yoga and meditation is to really get grounded in that now moment and really be present with your body as you're physically going through the asanas so that you can practice compassion in action, so that we're not pushing, so that we're not harming, and we're not apt to hurt ourselves. And then, uh, we want to be able to stay with the breath because the breath is able to bring us into the present moment. So that's our focus for today. And the last thing that I want to mention as part of our Dharma talk is the five love languages. So this is a book that was written. You may have heard people talk about it. You may have had a chance to read it yourself. It's a quick read. It's a fun read. And it talks about different people's personalities and how we all have a different expression of our love. And it usually falls under five categories. And one of those is gifts, you know, gifting people, uh, little presents here and there. Um, the second one is words of affirmation. The third one is acts of service. The fourth one is quality time. And the fifth one is physical touch. What's fascinating about this book and this assessment, which you could probably find online these days, is you can learn what your love language is. And then you're able to see it. You know, when you're with your friends and family, you're able to see that love language come out. But the love language that we give isn't always going to be received by another person. 
because the other person's love language may be different. Do you see what I'm saying? So when I started studying this with the book, I realized really quickly, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. My dad is a total gifter. Like Christmas is a huge deal with my dad. You just can't get enough presents under the tree. Like he just wants, and he's like that with my mom. <laughs> he's always wanting to gift her with things. My mom's is acts of service. As soon as you walk into the door, she's trying to feed you. And she's going to try to feed you the entire time. And she's going to try to give you food for your travels when you're getting ready to leave the house. And if she comes to your house, she wants to pitch in. She wants to help cook. She wants to clean. She wants to participate somehow in making your home a more inviting place or a cleaner place. <laughs> and she's doing it because that's her love language. My love language is physical touch and quality time. Give me some quality time, give me some physical touch, I'm good. I don't need gifts, I don't need, you know, acts of service, I'm very independent, just give me that. So learning what our children are, learning what our spouses or lovers are, learning what our parents are, is a great way to be able not only to give them with our presence, but also to give them their love language. What their love language is, they're going to receive it as that full fold. So that's our contemplative food for thought as we begin our practice today. And I would suggest two blocks of a bolster. Bring a block beside you, though. And we're going to lower down to our back. When you lower down to your back, separate your feet. Flex the ankles and lengthen out to the back side of the legs. And then relax the heels back to the mat. Kind of wiggle the toes or flip flop them back and forth. So we lengthen the legs to help to create some space for the low back. Then we were rocking the feet just to bring some relaxation up through the ankles, into the calves, into the knees and the thighs. So close your eyes if you haven't already. Rest your hands on your abdomen, but spread the fingers so that they're spread out above and below the navel area. The elbows can fan out and flop to the floor. Feel your seat spreading. The contact of your back ribs and the back of the skull against the ground. And just connecting to the surface below your body is a great way to start to connect to your physical core. So feel supported by the earth. And then look deep inside. Listen and feel to your body's calls. Whether or not any areas are crying out for a little bit more attention. Maybe you have a few aches or pains. Maybe there's some soreness or tightness. And you may not be receiving anything at all. So just be aware. Building your state of mindfulness before we begin movement. If you do have areas that are sore or in pain, you want to be particularly cautious with those regions as we explore the poses today. Let me just take time to assess your mind. Are you busy minded? Is it hyperactive, jumping from one thought to the next? If 
that's the case, go ahead and take the rate with your breath. Even if your mind is relatively calm, take command over your breath. Increasing the air supply into your lungs as you breathe in. Freely allowing that breath to escape as you breathe out. And as you allow the breath to deepen, become more enlivened, notice the movements beneath your hands. Feel the breath moving all the way down into the depth of the belly. Feeling it rise on the inhale, Feeling it softly to flames and drop on the exhale. Continue to hone in on the breath. Continue to focus on this movement. And let it soothe you from the inside out. The breath can truly be our anchor in the now moment. The breath can bring us the gift of being completely present with ourselves. Let's go ahead and inhale, slide the feet back so the ankles are lining up under the knees. Bring your hands beside you, palms facing downward. As you inhale, we're going to work into a bridge flow. So circle the arms overhead, tuck the tailbone, the thighs, hips, abdomen, and chest upward. And as you exhale, circle the arms back around to the mat and lower one vertebra at a time. When the hands and sacrum touch down and you're ready to breathe in, you're going to rise back up the same way. And as you exhale, you're going to coast back down one vertebrae at a time. Continue this flow of movement. Lifting to bridge on the inhale. Coming back down on the exhale. Now, the next time you come down, you're going to keep your hands stationed beside your hips. You're going to power down through the soles of the feet, and you're going to lift thighs, hips, abdomen, chest again. Now, really pressurize the feet, especially the mound of the big toes. This will keep the knees narrow, the thighs rolling in. Keep yourself lifted, continue to keep that strong breath work, and notice how your hamstrings are going to strengthen, your glutes are engaged in strengthening, and your back muscles are engaged in strengthening. See if you can stay up and tuck the shoulders under the body. Once you kind of rock and tuck the shoulders under, notice how the chest can puff a little higher towards your chin. Maybe your pelvis boosted up slightly. Gaze towards your abdomen. Watch it rise as you breathe in and release as you breathe out. Now find that block that you set beside you and notice the block can turn three different heights. You're going to slip one of those underneath your sacral, your low back, and you're going to rest on top of it. And you can then flip your palms open to be more receptive. 
noticing what you receive here. Now this pose, whether we do it actively or passively, is good for the spleen. It helps to purify our circulation. It's also good for the thyroid gland. This can be calming and cooling in a restorative way with the block. It can be heating and strengthening the active way that we were just doing. Manipulating the blood flow to pour down more towards the brain. And this can have a calming effect on the mind. Stay with your breath. Letting the belly balloon on the inhale and soften on the exhale. Take three more breaths here. Affirming to offer every thought as a bridge to divine grace. Offer every breath as an invisible thread to weave the mind, body, and spirit together as one. On your next in breath, press down through the soles of the feet, tuck the tailbone, squeeze the buttocks, lift away from the block, set it off to the side, and then roll it down one vertebra at a time. Once you lower down to your back, cross your left ankle over the right knee. Now there are days where you may need to stay here, just as you are. You're really present and connected to yourself. You'll be able to follow your intuitive guidance. If you want to go deeper, pick up that right foot, lace your hands behind your right thigh. And you're gently hugging it towards your upper body. Keep the flexion in the ankles to protect the knees. Remember, you're in control of how much or little you draw in. You go to the point where the buttocks is crawling off the floor. It's a physical signal that it's too much. You discover that you're holding your breath or it's not as fluid. That's another sign you're doing too much. Now we just had a holiday. You may have gathered with some friends and family. And grievances or annoyances <laughs> in our relations can show up in the hips. So if you're feeling extra sensitive here, or super tight here, it may stem from that. But we also have relationship with money. And that also correlates to this area of the body. You're the type of person that pushes down emotion. This is an area that can feel that. So we're basically trying to breathe in new life force energy into this region and we're trying to chisel away any of those suppressed emotions or grievances away. All right, let's go ahead and release our handhold. 
step the right foot back to the floor and cross the left ankle. And we're going to cross the right foot over the left knee. Checking in here first, because you're welcome to be here. Otherwise, pick up the left foot, place your hand behind it, squeeze in. This is a great pose to practice if you're traveling for long distances, sitting for long periods of time, but it's also equally good if you're super active. For instance, if you're into sports or you run. To breath deep. Slow. Your next exhalation, go ahead and release your grip, send the left foot down to the floor, drop your right foot beside it, and then fan your knees open and let the soles of the feet join together. Let your hands come back to rest on your belly. Let your inner and outer thighs relax. Let gravity do the work for you here. Take three deep breaths down into the belly. Up into the heart. At the end of those breaths, you'll inhale, flutter the knees back up and together. Roll to your right side body. And then come up to take a seat. I'm going to turn my back to you so that I don't confuse you with this next flow. We're going to have the fingertips set alongside us. And as we inhale, the palms will open and the arms will rise. When the arms rise, you can feel it also lengthens your spine and your back. And as you exhale, you're going to spin to the right. Setting the left hand to the right knee and the right hand behind you. Taking a twist. So if you want to press into the hands to twist a little bit more through the low and then back. If you want to turn your head to work up the cervical portion, you can. Breathe into it. Twists are really good for giving us a boost of energy, for helping us to increase our digestive process, can also purify the lungs, remove lactic acid from the muscles. Now, on your next inhale, you're going to lift the right arm. And just notice when you lift the right arm, you'll naturally kind of turn back to face the front. Maintain your hold of the knee with your left hand, and you're just going to swerve to your left. If it's too difficult to hang on to that right knee, you can slide it down to the shin bone instead. Breathe into your right lung. Open up that side body. And affirming mentally to yourself, strength and courage fill up my body zone. These affirmations are something for you to just roll over in your mind. 
plants and positive seeds of thought. Inhale, let's come back to the top. Exhale, remove the left hand, set the fingers back down. All right, second side. Inhale, the arms float up, elongating the vertebrae. Exhale, spinning to the left. And so it is important when you're doing a seated or standing twist to make sure you lengthen your back first. Because as we maneuver and wind ourselves up into the twist, it's going to bring additional circulation, which brings lubrication to the spinal disc, that soft, connective tissue in between each of the bones. And then if you want to grip your hands into your body or floor, to wind yourself up a little bit deeper into the twist, you can, as long as it doesn't cut off your breath supply. Keep that open channel of breath. Maybe even affirming here as you hold this twist. I radiate my love, goodwill, and compassion to soul friends everywhere. On your next inhale, lift your left arm. You'll naturally kind of unwind out of that twist, facing the front, and then exhale, swerve to the right. Opening up the left side body, flaking the left lung. Earning strength and courage fill up my body cells. Inhale, rise up and exhale, remove that right hand, come back to center. All right, if that block was still beside you from before, bring it with you to the top of the mat and we're going to stand all the way up. All right, we're going to work with some standing postures now. If you look down at his feet, make sure the toes point ahead and spread them out and really lodge them into the floor so that you feel really kind of locked and secure with your legs. Bring your hands to prayer position at the heart and lift through the crown of your head. Good as you inhale now, lift the arms up overhead. Exhale, bring the palms together and fold forward and down. To your Uttanasana. The hands can separate once you lower. Arms loosely still off the back, head falling heavy, tipping the weight forward towards the toes. Inhale, slide your hands up your legs, come halfway up. Look out with your eyes and then exhale, gently fall back in. Inhale, root down to rise all the way up. Doing some half sun salutes. So notice when you lift your arms, you start focusing on the waist up. You keep your feet pressurized, your legs locked into place. Exhale, hands together, and bow forward again, Uttanasana. Inhale, lifting halfway up. Exhale, pour right back over and down. We're going to do one more of these. Inhale to the top. Exhale, hands together and fold straight down. Now let's pause here a moment. If you need to soften the knees, that's okay. Just keep the feet pressurized. Keep the muscles engaged. We're not just stretching the back of the body. We're actually trying to lift through the knees, contract the quads, so that the front of the body is supporting the back of the body. Instead of allowing the belly to just spill over, you're trying to hug the belly in towards your back to give your low back some support. All right, we're gonna take the hands to the blocks. And we're going to step the blocks back beside the feet. And we're going to launch the right foot way back. 
So you're standing your hands on the blocks, so framing the front foot. Glide your left hip towards the back wall and then kind of tuck it in. Keep your back thigh plucking up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, you're going to lower the back foot down. Once you anchor the back heel, the arms are going to lift up. The front knee is going to stay in the lunge. And we're trying to bring the head over the shoulders, the shoulders over the hips. This is called warrior one. And we're going to flow with this for a little bit. But before we flow with it, roll the pinkies in towards the temples. And notice when you roll the pinkies in, it kind of spreads the shoulder blades in the back body. Draw up through the navel and feel the extra exertion in your psoas. Keep anchoring your back foot to feel your right side of your glutes firm up. And then go ahead and straighten the front leg and bring your hands down to prayer position at your heart. All right, we're going to do a little flow with this. So relax your arms beside you. Inhale, the arms are going to lift, the front knee's going to lunge. And then as you exhale, the arms lower and the leg straightens. Simple, gentle movement. Inhale, arms up, knee lunges. Exhale, straighten the leg and arms release. Good, now flow with your breath three more times. You can even bring in that Ujjaya breath where it makes the breath audible to hear. Last one. Good, now we're going to relunge that front knee but we're going to tilt forward with our torso. Good. Really push back through the right thigh bone. Take the arms up alongside your ears. Lace your fingers together, except for your index fingers. And gaze at one point on the floor that's ahead of you. This is called lightning lunge. All right, exhale. Take the hands back to the blocks. Spin away from the back heel. That way the heel is elevated back behind you. Now slowly start to explore your balance as you relift the arms. When we turned away from the back heel, that drew the right hip to be in alignment and square with the left. If you want to explore more, you can lift through your floating ribs and maybe take a gentle back bend. And then exhale, the hands are gonna to come together and we're gonna hover over the front leg. Now we're more weighted in the front foot. Keep the hamstrings engaged. Take the wings of the heart, the arms, and spread them out like wings of an airplane. Good, then bring the hands to the blocks. All right, we're gonna step the blocks ahead of the left foot, shoulder distance apart, and we're gonna elevate the back leg. You got it. Good, turn the right toes down, push the heel back. Breathe. Now lower the right foot beside your left. Awesome. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, hands down. We stayed on that one side for a bit, didn't we? <laughs> now we get to explore the second side. One side's always stronger, some side's always weaker. It's okay. Let's just notice what it is today. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, fold, find your blocks. All right, we're gonna walk the blocks back beside the feet, but this time we're stepping the left foot back. Step it way back. The hands on the blocks are underneath the shoulders. Keep the back thigh plucking up. Left or right hip, I should say, squeezing in a little bit. 
Good. Now rotate the back heel down to the floor. Inhale, draw the arms up to warrior one. When you bring the arms up, head over shoulder, shoulders over hips. Roll the pinkies in, spread open through the upper back. Find the drishti point, which means a focal point for the eyes. That will keep the mind less distracted, more present in your body and with the sensation. All right, bring the hands together, lower them to prayer, slowly straighten up the right leg. Where are the hips? Relax your arms. All right, we're going to go into that flow. Inhale, arms float up, knee lunges. Exhale, the arms down and the leg straightens. Yep, simple, gentle movement. Inhale, this variation of warrior one. And exhale, exiting the pose. We've got a couple more. Good. When you're ready, inhale, unset knee. Exhale, bring the hands to prayer. And just a slight bit over. And the arms are going to circle back and up, lacing the hands to Jupiter Mudra for a lightning lunge. You should feel strong work in your back calf muscles. Glue the back foot to your mat. Gaze at something with your eyes. Keep the breath flowing. Give yourself the gift of truly being present in the now. And really should be. Spin off the back heel. Now we're going to try to balance more. And crescent lunge. So it's different than warrior one. You can choose to be right here, spine erect, looking straight ahead, or you can challenge yourself by striking a back bend. All oh, bring the hands to prayer. Lean over and then take the arms nice and wide. Bring the hands to the blocks. Step the blocks ahead. Shift forward, elevating your left leg and foot, using the box to assist balance. Torso parallel to the ground, version of warrior three. Take one more breath. And then exhale, land the left foot. All right, inhale, build it up. Ooh, my legs are shaking now. <laughs> Hands together and humbly fold. Uttanasana. Now let's go ahead and bring the blocks back again. Step back with your right foot, but plant your back heel. Take the hands off the blocks. Continue to look down at your right foot. So instead of the toes being really turned in, rotate the foot so it's parallel to the back of your mat. That's it, that's great, Nicole. All right, lift your arms up. And then we're gonna lean out over the front leg. Windmill the hand down to the shin or block if you need it. <coughs> and then inhale, draw it up. Let your left arm shine to the sky. And on the exhale, you're hinging forward, taking triangle. Good, another old school version of triangle, lifting the left hand up. And then exhale, down to more modern triangle. All right, from here, you're gonna lower your right hand down. And you're going to spin 
and hop the back foot forward so the toes turn a little bit more in than before. Yep, drive your left hip back and your right hip around towards the front. Your hand stationed underneath the shoulders, your spine elongating forward. Good. And then exhale, drape down into the pyramid. You may or may not need box at this point. Inhale, lift the head up. Spin away from the back heel. Step it up to the front. We'll take that sequence to the other side. The left leg's going to step back. Good. Plant your heel. Float your hands up. And then you want to turn your left toes back more so the foot's more parallel to the back side of your mat. Arms float up shoulder height. Launch out over the right leg. Windmill down to triangle pose. Root the four corners of the feet, tighten up through the knees. Draw in through your navel. Inhale. Bring the right arm skyward, the left hand lowers back behind you. Exhaling, triangle. Do that again. Inhale, old school form. Exhale, modern form. Now we're going to bring that left hand down. The hands will station down to the blocks. We'll offset the left foot, turn it in at more of an angle. Square the hips more. You got it. And then you can stay here elongated, or you can drape down over the front leg. And I always think it's important to explore those two options because most people want to take it deeper, but some days lengthening the back takes it deeper than draping over. So experiment with both and see which you prefer. Anchoring for you in the now, just like the feet are anchoring you into this pose. Inhale, lift the head and heart. Lunge the front knee, wiggle the left toes back, and then you'll set the back knee to the floor and tuck the back toes. All right, we're going to inhale, press into the right foot to draw up through the pelvic floor and lift the arms overhead. We're going to take a twist here, but the right hand is going to come to the waist and the left hand is going to cross over to that front knee. Round the back shin, round the right foot for better stability. Good. Unwind from the twist. Set both hands on the front knee, and you're just going to sink and surrender, sink and surrender, sink and surrender. Hands will be stationed here because we're going to back the right leg up. We're going to launch and set the left foot down. All right, come here. We're gonna, instead of just sinking the hips like we are right now, once we take the hands away, we're pushing into the left foot and we're drawing up to the pelvic floor. And then as we exhale, left hand to the waist, right hand to the knee. Breathe. Balance. So the reason why we're doing some of these more balancing type of positions is because balancing poses demand our attention and we have to be present in order to maintain and strike that balance. 
All right, exhale, unwind, set both hands to that front thigh up, and you're just going to sink and surrender. When you're ready, lean forward, send the blocks to the sides. Shift the left knee back to table. And then solidify the palms down. Good, curl your toes and fly the knees up, fly the hips up, downward facing dog. So really root your hands at the primary foundation here. Push up and back into the hips, create some space in between each vertebra. As you exhale, descend your knees. Open up to cow. Create a saddle in your back and lift through your chin. Exhale, draw the navel in and then launch back into downward facing dog. Let your head hang effortlessly between the arms. Look in the direction of the feet or beyond. On your next in breath, sink to the knees. Create that saddle in your back. Open your heart and throat. Exhale, draw the navel in and press back downward facing dog. All right, we're going to do one more of those. Inhale, coming back to the knees. Opening up the heart and throat. Exhale, belly draws in, push up and back to downward facing dog. Now you're going to walk your hands back towards your toes. We're going to bend the knees and bring the hands to prayer position as we lift our torso up. So you're sitting back with your hips, <laughs> hands to prayer. Now, if your balance is really off today, just be here, stationed on both feet. You want to explore your balance. Remember what we did as a warm up earlier. We're taking it a step farther by crossing the right ankle over the left knee. You can always hold on to a piece of furniture or a wall if you're at home. Use that foot. We'll take it to the other side. Bend the knees, sit down in the back. When you're ready, stay stationed on the right foot. Crisscross the left ankle. So, this is strengthening for the standing leg. It's a stretch for the left hip. Slowly exit out. All right, let's be here for getting hot. Over that. <laughs> okay, we're going to do tree. So, tree, you want to grow the base of your left foot, stack and stand the bones and joints, take the weight off your right foot. And the most gentle way. Is to do it like this. If you want to inch the foot up to the calf, that's a little bit more of a challenge. If you want to hike it up to your inner thigh, you just have to push those two together. Palm, poise. Present. Release. To the other side. Ground the right foot. 
stack the bones and joints, take the weight off the left. Be super gentle here with that left foot still on the floor, just don't touch it into the hip. You're lifting out of it. You want to inch it up to the calf. To me, that's the hardest one. You want to hike it up to the inner thigh, push the two strongly together. Balance and breathe. Affirming to yourself. Presence, voice. All right, we're coming back to the top of the mat. That's where our blocks are. I'm going to challenge you one more time, and then we're going to lower to the floor and take it a little bit easier. Okay, so we're going to remember the bouncing pose we did. Have your blocks shoulder distance apart. Bring your left foot more to the space in between. Right, not all the way up in between, but in that space. Yeah. Step your right foot back, hands to hips. And the first thing we're going to do is just land the hands and pick up the right foot, right? Similar to what we did earlier. Now, if that right hip is really rolling open, roll it down so that you can feel the front, the back, the inner, and the outer standing thigh. To challenge yourself, you'll come to the fingertips and then bring the hands to prayer position apart or out like wings of an airplane. And if at any point you need to spill the hands down for assistance, they're there to help. Beautiful. Bring your hands to the blocks. Awesome. Lower the right foot. Walk it over. So it's more in that space in between. And then we can come up. Hands to the hips, left foot back. When you're ready, sit forward. Use the blocks for stability. Notice where your left hip is in space. Roll it down a notch if you need to. If you need to stay here using blocks, perfectly acceptable. If you want to challenge yourself, come to the fingertips first, hands to heart, or slay your weights. And so hands down whenever you need to. Land your left foot, heel, toes, in apart. Bring your block in. Sit on the block. You can turn three different heights, remember. Whatever height works for you. Just laying the knees open. Gently rotating the hips. Move the block away safely, slowly. All right, we're going to separate the feet even wider than the mat. And the left shoulder is going to slide down towards the inside of that left knee. Yep. The right arm is going to reach up and out towards the heavens. So that you're taking a twist here. Exhale, lower the right hand down. Inhale, soar the left arm up. This will be our final twist today. And exhale. All right, so we're taking the blocks on our tallest height and setting them up like columns. And we're creating a stone hinge type of formation now with the bolster on top. 
Because now you get to take rest. Good ending. I know. I love so much. <laughs> Let your legs stack up. You can roll down to your back. Your hands can be on or off the body. I'm going to change this music out. I'm going to dim the lights. Turn off this other heater. But you can listen to a little sound meditation. The water flowing. The bells chiming. And all I need you to do now is to continue to gift yourself presence, staying in your body, using your listening. as a way to withdraw from all the other distractions. Only hearing my voice, the sound from the music, or any street noise. And perhaps diving deeper to go into some deep inner listening to hear the call or whisper of your higher self.
hands are resting off the body, place them on the belly. Start to magnify the breath. So let your breathing down deep into the belly, breathing up into your heart. Eventually drawing the knees in, wrapping your arms lovingly around you. Apanasana, the wind release pose. And turn over to your right side. Go ahead and press your way up to take a seat with your spine on, palms open. Hopefully the palms open are symbolic of your mind and heart being more expanded and open through our practice together. And joining your hands together to prayer. And we all walk away from this practice realizing the importance of practicing mindfulness, the importance of being in the now, the importance of being present with others, to discover the love languages so that we can give as well as receive. The light and the love in my heart bows respectfully and humbly the light and the love within yours. Namaste. Namaste. Joining me today, I do plan on being here um, Wednesday 